Hello everyone, here we are again. I got um, a bunch of videos lined up for you guys. This time is going to be uh, a series of um, Canada Goose series, let's call it. So I had a couple of Canada Geese to mount and they're going to be standing or perched, not flying. So I, uh, I filmed one of them, but uh, at the end I'll show you both. Okay, so um, pretty much the video is uh, self-explanatory and uh, the speed is um, basically I, I made sure that uh, the, the high speed is in the areas that there's not any uh, tips or tricks that needs to be talked about. So I'm pretty much going to let you watch and I will chime in as soon as I think that there is something important that you guys need to know. Okay, so as you can see, we're starting with carving out the neck and we have the frozen carcass right on the table so we can use it for reference. Okay, enjoy the show and I will talk to you here and there very soon. Based on the position of the finished product that you are, you should have it in mind how you're going to mount it. Uh, when it comes to attachment of neck to the skull, it can make a difference on how you attach it or where to attach it. Because if you're going to have a flying bird, you might want to attach it uh, more toward the back of the skull versus if it's a standing and neck high position, then you want to make sure. Uh, to attach it in the right place. So here what I'm doing, I have the skull, I am injecting the eyes and basically leaving it in inside a little jar of water. So I bring the eyes pumped out or plumped out and make the measurements how much eyes are sticking out of the sides of the head and also the measurements from the tip of the beak till back of the eyes or front of the eyes doesn't matter so you take those measurements and here you see I'm using um, my blue caliper I'm gonna show you if you get a small caliper cheap plastic one and you extend the arms with sticks like that blue pieces of sticks to it it will allow you to to measure uh, harder to measure items or subjects basically you, you just saw that what I did and you're gonna see me using it again for when we're adjusting the eyes because calipers are coming with short arms uh, so if you extend them it will allow you to just do more work so with having those measurements in hand we can exactly measure where to put our eyes on the skull and it would be identical to the real positioning of the bird So if the eyes are sticking out too much, you have to just push it in more into the clay till you get the same measurements that you, you got from, from the real skull.
Now that I'm quite happy with the placement of the eyes on the skull, now I'm going to build up the eyelids and make it smooth out around. And uh, I'll show you, when it's done, I'll show you in a slow motion um, that um, if the eyes are symmetric or not. Yeah, I'm pretty much done here with uh, building up around the eyes and um, now here you can see uh, from the front if the, if the face is symmetric the eyes are looking forward and of course if it's the dark eye you can always use your headlamp or your flashlight to make sure where the pupils are and be satisfied with it so we're gonna move on with uh, dab drying the, the washed and soaked bird here so if, when you notice here is different is like on larger birds uh, I left um, a wing a wing incision open so um, because it, it captures a lot of moisture and a lot of uh, water inside so I don't sew it up till I'm 100% I'm sure that it's fairly uh, dry and uh, all the excess moisture is out so now we're going to proceed with the rest of the work which is uh, basically putting the wire through the neck and uh, have it ready to install into the bird's skin so at the bottom of the neck I carved out a little bit too much so it was uh, I should have carved less but at least uh, we can make up for it with wrapping some of these cotton batting at the bottom. So I like to push a piece of stick or two metal rods or one rod and one stick inside the neck and move it around and uh, basically stretch the neck skin as much as possible so it's not as tight uh, when I'm pushing the neck inside. So again, you know, in waterfowls, because both sides of the neck is larger than the middle, so we have to push the neck into the skin before we attach it into the skull. Otherwise, we can't push it in. So the wire is coming out of the skull with another hole. We bend the wire, goes back inside the skull. And just because of the situation we are right now, we use our empty staple gun as an air hammer to push the wire into the skull 100%. It usually goes in with a few taps of a hammer, but you have to hold the um, skull at the edge of a table which in this situation we couldn't now we're using the hot glue to just glue the neck into the foam uh, into the skull sorry and then we carve out and smooth out the back of it it's still not uh, if it has some imperfections Okay, well this part is coming up to an end. 
um, I'm trying to keep them short so it's not too boring and it's not too long for you guys. Uh, moving on to uh, putting some voice over to the next part. This series is four uh, segments. There's four videos and uh, we will upload them as, as soon as they're all ready one at a time. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for part two.